question. Right. Mm -hmm. It just seems to me that it's a relatively discrete problem of people who in some cases have the same name as somebody on the list. Sometimes those they're, you know, they're little kids. So yeah. why do we need a working group to study this more? It seems like the Americans have a system called the redress system. Why don't we just simply adopt that rather than study it some more? Well, the, uh, the, the problem has been, uh, has been a long-standing problem, and we're trying to find uh, a permanent solution to it. Uh, the, the, um, the, the problem originates with the original design of the uh, Passenger Protect program in Canada, which was uh, designed to sort of piggyback onto the, onto the computer systems of the airlines, uh, and it's not an interactive system. The American system is a standalone system run by the government, and the, the database is entirely interactive. Uh, and in that way, the, the American authorities are, are able to, uh, to deliver those redress solutions uh, very quickly. The, the Canadian system, for some reason, whenever it was designed years ago, was not set up in that fashion. Uh, so uh, we, are, we are looking at the practical ways where we can find solutions in the short term uh, for the, uh, the false positives that, uh, that are popping up uh, and, then, and then redesign the whole thing for the longer term, which will mean an entirely new database and information system. Uh, and, that, and that takes some time. But we are learning from, from the American approach, which is faster and does appear to be does appear to be uh, more, more efficient in providing the redress alternatives. We also have uh, a, this new uh, agreement that, w that originates from the, uh, from the state visit to, to Washington uh, about uh, the, uh, the improvement in the cross-border relationship on a number of fronts between Canada and the United States. And in that context, we took advantage of that opportunity to establish a redress working group between both countries to draw this together as effectively as we can to eliminate this problem. The way you described it, talk about this file, it sounds to me clearly you've studied this, you know the file well, you understand the issues, you understand the potential solutions. So I guess the question is why not just implement the solutions? Why well, announce it's be, 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 Because you've got to change the entire database. You've got to change the entire computer system on the Canadian side, and I've asked the uh, the information technology experts, and they and they tell me that is neither uh, quick nor easy, uh, and it will require uh, substantial investment. Uh, so I we, we've got to get all those ducks in a row. It would have been far better if when this was designed years ago, that the Canadian system would have been structured in a similar way to to the American, but it wasn't. Instead of having our own standalone government-run database, it's piggybacked on information provided by the airlines, and that makes it extremely complicated in order to fix this problem. But it, sounds, it sounds like you're well on your way. Well, I, I, I've, been, I've been sufficiently aggravated by this problem for the last, for the last uh, four or five months uh, that, uh, that I, am, I am pushing on all fronts to get a solution. Now, one thing needs to be noted. There are no six-year-olds on the no-fly list. Unfortunately, there are uh, adult culprits who have very similar or the same names, and they are on the list, and it's the confusion between the two that is causing the problem. We've got to find the, the fail-safe methods in order to eliminate that confusion. So we, uh, if, if, well, if you ask the computer experts about how you design this to get rid of the problem, they, they will tell you, uh, you've, you've really got to start all over again and redesign the system. It would have been better if it had been designed properly in the first place, it wasn't. Uh, so now I'm, I'm cleaning up the mess I inherited uh, and it's, it's going to take a little while to get there. Now, there is, there is a, a short-term solution for some of these problems, for some of these travelers, and that is if they have some kind of an affinity card that the airlines recognize. Remember, it's their database, not ours. It should have been ours, but it's not, it's theirs. So they have to have an affinity card that they recognize. That, that's why uh, an, a Nexus card may help that's why, in the case of Air Canada, an Aeroplan card may help to eliminate the problem. Uh, but 
where it should have been designed as a government system to start with. So once a false positive pops up, you can say, okay, the government's going to redress this problem by giving this particular traveler the secondary identification that they need. That should have been built into the system at the beginning. It wasn't. We're now in the process of finding the ways to fix it. And in the meantime, we're trying to find these other ways using the affinity cards that it can at least smooth the way a little bit for some of these people who are having this awful problem that they shouldn't have.